How's it going guys? It's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to review the Zix 5368. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or if you say Z-I-K-Z -Z, but I'm going to call it either the Zix or the Off-Road Drifting Snail. Um, I just want to say quickly, the reason I'm reviewing this one, it was pretty high on my list anyway because I was interested to see like does one uh, rear axle make a difference over two, which a lot of the trucks have. And then uh, yeah, a lot of you let me know what trucks you want to see. This one got the most uh, thumbs up. So that's why I'm doing it. I will say soon though, I will be doing uh, the Cat CT680 is a popular one. I'd also like to know that myself because it's quite a good contender to the Navistar. And obviously for a lot of you, you either can't or don't want to buy the Navistar, which I appreciate. Which kind of leaves you with the CT680 as a good uh, alternative. So that'll be soon. I also would like to do an A's of 5319 pretty soon because that's bloody good. And uh, a lot of you want to see the Derry 4520, so I'll also get on with that pretty soon. Eventually I will do the Navistar as well, because obviously let you know if it's worth buying or not. Which I think it is, but that's not consumer advice, that's opinion, so do your own research and stuff. Don't blame me if you buy it and you don't like it. Anyway, we'll get on with this review. So first things first, we'll uh, check out the engines. Uh, basically, obviously top engine, very good power to weight and everything. That middle engine is the one you can now find in Rift, but obviously I remembered why I didn't really care that I found it, because it's already got the best one. High range gearbox, you'll see little examples of why I prefer that. As for the suspension, uh, actually does raise it up quite a bit. It's more like how the uh, White Western started. As for the tyres quickly, I just wanted to say while I'm scrolling down, the reason I go for chain tyres, I appreciate there is more nuance to the tyres than the game tells you, and that's their mistake. I, don't, I think they need more detail. But as you look through the ratings, the off-road tyres are basically average, excellent, good, and the chained ones are the same, but they add ice that's excellent. So even though there may be some off-road tyres that are better, the average person, me included, is just going to scroll down and go, oh, well, there's no gain. Uh, well, if anything, there's a gain to have in the chain tyres, and the chain tyres are very good in mud. I did a container contest run with the Tager earlier, and I got a better time with chain tyres than mud tyres on uh, drowned lands. So, chain tyres are by no means bad, and that's why I'm going to stick with them for this. Uh, I've got the strongest winch. I can, a spare tyre it can have. Uh, I usually leave the spare tyre though, as for the add-ons it can have everything but you need to know it'll let you put the crane on, this is a bit stupid, and a saddle low but if you go to pick up a trailer with this setup it'll say remove add-ons or you know an add-on is blocking the trailer you have to basically make the choice between the crane or the saddle even though the, you can have the look of it uh, yeah if you've got the crane on it won't let you get a trailer so it's functionally pointless really uh, engageable diff it's got and uh, I mean, look at that! Look at the snorkels on that. They're a beast. It's uh, it gave me a pretty good sign that it's going to be pretty good in water. So uh, the attachment, I mean, the same usual stuff: parking lights, horns, beacons. I got them little parking lights on the edges because I thought they looked quite nice. In the end, I took the beacons off and just went for that because they block the snorkels. And yeah, well, gotta gotta see where it's going, isn't it? With its little peepers. I can't take the uh, mud flaps off. If I could, I would, but I can't, so I won't. <laughs> Um, as for the bumper, I'm lining it up with the boxes in the background to give you some like uh, just a reference point. This is what I usually do. That no way, way worse. That way worse. And then the top one, it is worse, but the overall angle isn't that bad. So if you really were a fan of that bumper, just do it. it ain't gonna, it's not gonna completely ruin it. The other two, hell no. But that one is definitely the best, the stock bumper, which is why. That's what I'm going to keep on. But yeah, it, overall its angle is decent anyway, so... Again, if you like that bumper, then do it. Uh, yeah, it's got uh, some visor. As for the rims, I quite like the third rims. But they're the other options you can have. And then for the paint schemes... I've actually gone for that colour, to be honest. I quite like it. I don't know, it's just got... Feels good in that colour to me. But uh, as for the paint schemes, you've got this one. They, a lot of these actually suit it. I don't know why, just because it's like a retro truck. Uh, yeah, even that sort of suits it, which wouldn't suit a lot of trucks. That, I don't like it, but I bet it does suit the period, like a lot of cars back in the 80s and that were painted in all sorts of colours like that. That's nice. Out of the paint schemes, that's my favourite. Not 
too keen, but I don't. I certainly don't dislike it. But yeah, I like that. I'm going for the uh, yellow. So we'll take her outside and have a look. Pretty good looking truck to be honest. Pretty small. But yeah, not bad. Looks like a car and loaf a bit from the front. <laughs> That's always a good sign to me. Inside looks pretty old school. Uh, I like the views all around. I like that there's another window behind the door and stuff. You can't quite see the your own tyres out the back, but it's not the end of the world. You certainly see cargo and stuff. Uh, yeah, overall pretty old school and basic inside. Pretty old dash. You can see the tyres in the mirror. Uh, outside, yeah, there's no exhaust stacks, nothing like that in the way, so the views are very good. The views are very good overall, all around. As for the horn... Uh, I don't know how well it shows up on YouTube, but it has actually got a bit of, like, meatiness to it. So, uh, yeah, it's not not bad. And I, unless I'm blind, I really can't see a rev counter anywhere. Which is fine, it doesn't matter, but it's just the first truck I've noticed. Like, I've looked at every dial multiple times and I really can't see a rev counter. So anyway, we'll set off. She certainly motors, gets up to speed very well. Very good power to weight. Um, trailers... You can basically have every trailer. Obviously, that first one it said no because I've got the wrong saddle on. But uh, yeah, every trailer, so that's good to know. But again, no crane with it. Uh, through here, even in auto, it actually did really well across here. But in the end, about here, I put it in high, and you can start to see it's not a major issue, but it's and it's not top heavy. It's front heavy, so it can bounce around on its front suspension. Like there, you see the back lifts up. Obviously, if you turn a trailer, it'll stop a lot of that. Through here, I mean, it's doing very well, to be fair. Like, I was testing between low and auto, but auto just feels like it's got more punch to it for me. It just, like I say, feels like high-low. But I appreciate with this truck, the diffs are engageable, so every now and then putting it in low and the diffs on uh, might be beneficial, but... So as I'm going up here, as you can see, this is where like it starts to bounce on its front suspension. It makes the turning a little bit iffy, and I go a bit squirrely. And there, this was actually my second attempt here. I did roll it. Like It's not top-heavy, but it definitely can't lean as far as some trucks. And it will go like, yeah, before like the Voron and the Tega and stuff, they're better. Uh, going along here, funnily enough, look, I put it in auto, uh, low, I genuinely couldn't have staged this, I wouldn't have known, but just as I put it in low, I hit a rock and I couldn't get over it, put it in auto, I get over it, so that's just to me why after a while, I've done a lot of testing with low and high range gearboxes and I just prefer, like if I did all the reviews like this, in low range, in low, we're not going to learn anything, we're just going to learn that every truck goes this fast in low gear. <laughs> It'd be like a gearbox review, then not a truck review. And uh, yeah, I want to see how much each truck can squeeze out of uh, how much it can get out of the high range. Going along here, it was a bit bouncy. I just wanted to show you that, like, basically I rolled just up ahead and I was on my way back. I push the limits when I'm doing these reviews, that's why I drive like a madman and stuff. When I'm actually just driving back here and I didn't think I would use this footage, this is how I would drive this truck if I was just playing by myself. I'm feathering the throttle, so I'm still in high, but I'm feathering it and it's not jumping around on its suspension anywhere near as bad. I'm in control and it's fine, but I'm still keeping a nice pace. It's not run out of juice and it started saying stalling. Here's where I rolled when I just gunned it through. Uh, and now when I get to like a straight bit where I know there's not many bumps I can just floor it again so that's another reason it's like just because I have high range in the high range gearbox it, I don't have to keep it pinned 24 7 and by myself I wouldn't as much but yeah like I say for these reviews I want to push it to its limits because whatever its limits is we all know it's going to be comfortable below them limits but yeah we want to know where the limit is uh, as for this, I tried to hit just one tree and look at it. <laughs> not that it's definitely not a tree killer. And obviously, it's for some of you, it probably won't matter. But it does tell me, even though this thing has got great power to weight, it is also light. And, uh, yeah, as you see here, the mud did slow me down a bit. But And what that means is if you're coming around a corner and you can see a tree up ahead, this isn't a good option to think, oh, I'll just knock the tree down and keep going. However... As you'll see later on, its steering is so bloody good that you 
won't ever really need to hit a tree. Like, so it's sort of like, it can't hit trees well, but it gets around it in other ways, literally. This first bit, the same as usual. All trucks, like, they don't like high, or most of them don't even like auto here. It's definitely very, like, boggy, sloppy mud at the start. And as you push through... See, here is one of those rare occasions where low is, like, a nice... High low might still wheel spin, but once you're out of that first bit, you can put it in auto, and once that bikes, you can generally stick trucks in high, and yeah, it motors out of there pretty damn respectably, to be honest. Slows down a tiny bit there, because I fell in the rut of a, like, where tyre tracks, but yeah, other than that, not bad. Now, I did take my time a bit more up here, because I didn't want to come gunning it in here. You can see it's already getting dark. <laughs> That's how long it took me to get to this point alone. And uh, But yeah, like, again, if you just take your time a little bit, it doesn't roll as bad as the ANK or anything or the Royal, because the Royal's top heavy the Royal encourages itself to go as for suspension considering how fast it is, it has actually I think got pretty tough suspension it's a very small truck so you see them rocks, I mean they're meaty rocks but to this, they're like, they're very meaty and uh, it's still, like, you get the odd one damage, but a lot of stuff does a lot worse than that, so yeah I really don't think the suspension is that bad at all, there's a lot of stuff you bounce over and it just takes no damage. Or one. It's funny, as I was driving down here, look at this. Hit that, I was like, Jesus Christ. Managed to save it because of the good steering. It's like, whoever made that barrier, one, well done, you got at your job and you probably deserve a promotion. Two, calm the fuck down. It's supposed to be a visual barrier, not some truck driving suicide bomber anti-terrorist barricade. But yeah, that nearly uh, made me lose it. <laughs> Luckily, because the steering's so good and responsive on this truck, I managed to save it and miss that um, telegraph pole. As for this Black River river crossing, it's... You can see I'm putting it in low and stuff. By the way, I know some say, oh, like, low range has got three lows. Look, half throttle in low <laughs> is like low low. And I've also still got a bit of punchiness in the throttle if I need it. So yeah, that's how I make up for not having three low range gears, is half throttle, <laughs> which isn't that hard. And the other thing I don't like with the low range gearbox is high low and high range are the same gear basically. So even though you gain three low gears, you basically completely lose high range, which is just too good in so many situations for me to lose. But yeah, I can, I've got a basic low. I can do low low with half throttle and very often first gear auto is like high low so I just don't really lose anything I don't think. Uh, driving through here though certain bits it's quicker in low with the diffs on obviously certain bits it's still quicker with in auto even though it does disengage the gif uh, the gif the diff on this one and uh, yeah it's not the quickest but it did actually make it through and it didn't feel like a painful struggle it just it's not the quickest and that's it really and as we uh, get further up here the reason I left this last little bit in as I climb out is I wanted to see again so I drove up towards these barriers and I mean look once it's out straight up into high no problem I mean look at that 21 is it it shrinks the screen when I'm recording but I, that's one of the highest damage I've ever seen hitting barriers and it's took it twice so yeah it's uh, not the strong the suspension is pretty strong but the face of it isn't so anyway coming out of Northport go to go in the snow that's what can happen every now and then if you jump off a ledge it's because uh, it's front heavy that's what can happen and now it gets over that barrier but then here it's really not liking it and I think again that's because a lot of the weight's at the front and it just can't really get the grip to get over. I tried to uh, encourage it but it took quite a little, uh, well quite more than a little, took a bit of damage then. So I just wanted to try like reversing it. I'm definitely giving it a fair shot but it's not having it. I knew the back would probably get over here because there's no weight over the back but the front wouldn't get over. However, this time, when I went forwards, so you've got to try twice just in case. Once it bounced and its suspension lifted up, it kind of lifted the weight off the front tyres just long enough that they gripped and popped over. 
and then it gets over here again. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Some trucks, like the Voron yesterday, just warped it. But um, yeah, this I would avoid barriers if you can. But because the turning's so good, you can. Uh, I left that a little bit in. Some trucks you can just swerve off the road and bomb up here. Whereas obviously this thing, you've got to be a bit careful. It can tip. So over here for a snow test, it's doing just fine. I test it again in low and auto, but... Right now, it's not actually really these trees I'm pushing over that's stopping me. I've noticed this on a few clips. It's that bloody bush, that grey bush that's about to pop out the back now. Them things, man, when you drive over them, they uh, slow your truck down a lot worse than a tree you've knocked over. But other than that, I got over there pretty fine. Obviously, again, this is not the biggest truck in the world, so everything's a little bit bigger to it, if that makes sense. Like if you could put this thing on Microsoft Paint and make it like one and a half times bigger. So it gets up here fine, a little bit tilty there, but because the step, the turning's so good, I'm able to get back round to that bit of the ledge, whereas like the Voron yesterday couldn't. However, this thing, because it's front heavy, and it did start to grip its wheels, but that rock just in front of me, as soon as it touched that, it stopped. And long story short, I tried to winch it over, but I couldn't, like, it just tipped sideways. If I had a trailer on, obviously, that wouldn't be a problem jumping over a ledge. Well, not jumping, just going down a ledge. But on its own, it is nose heavy. So, cargo and turning circle. I even drove forward and then turned, so I give it the worst chance possible, so to speak. I mean, look at it. Insanely good turning circle. It's so good, in less than one... In less than 360 degrees, I've caught my own trailer up. And then, obviously, I'd easily be able to make it out of these... Uh, that entrance but I was testing a few things because it was so good so from this side of the truck I was just seeing how quickly and in, in sort of a fairly tight space I could get my truck round to the other side of the trailer and yeah very like this thing on tight twisty roads and stuff would be bloody amazing uh, a lot of trucks don't like doing this I'm pushing the trailer backwards now until it obviously straightens out and that did it fine it's even though it's a light truck it's still got some bloody good power and again, most trucks here, I would thought I'd have to do a three-point turn. This thing, I even thought I might have to do with this. I mean, look at it. Turns like a London taxi. Um, yeah, best turning I've come across in the game so far. Or, to be fair, best truck turning. <laughs> the Loaf does have a tighter turning circle than that, but obviously the Loaf can't tow trailers. So, scouts and trucks separate. This is the best truck turning circle I've found in the game so far. Looks nice as well when it's towing cargo and stuff. I like old school retro looking trucks, so... I was quite happy with how it pulled through that first part, because I just wasn't sure if only one rear axle would make... like a big difference or not, but it certainly didn't there. This second half... If you see now, it's going just fine in low gear. But I get to here, and it suddenly stops, and then when I put it in auto, can you see how the back... It's like the wheels trying to climb over something. And I was having a look, and what I think it is, is there's a tree branch buried in the mud. So in the end, I did use my winch just to pop me over the tree branch. You can see it drops back down there. And then I can drive out. So to be honest, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, because the tree branch isn't there for every time I do this test. And it like I've come across them many times doing my own thing. And they are a bit trollish once you hit them. And it's not really this thing's fault. Uh, and yeah, apart from that, it pulled through that mud just fine in low, so it's uh, it's actually not a bad little cargo hauler for, for what it is. So, shallow water test. See, it's quick enough steering. I was able to avoid two of the three edges. That was probably more my fault, because I didn't steer enough. And look when I turn out here. I turn now, and it still makes it, like, practically just did a 90 degree turn. That was my fault. I was looking at what gear I was in. I looked back and I was like, oh crap. So yeah, that was my my bad. I rescued it with the uh, load style, little scout. The thing is a, definitely a good good old beast. And through here, not the quickest, but not silly slow or anything. But when I got here though, one thing it really doesn't do too well on, it got me earlier somewhere as well. I thought now, oh, that's a bit weird. It's going pretty slow. It's them bloody tree branches. As soon as they ping off my truck... I go back to... I still think Auto's just got the more punchiness, but either way, they're both very, like, respectable. They're still ticking along. And obviously, when I get back to a road, I like to crank it up in high and, yeah, get moving a little bit. And it does that very nicely because it's got such quick, responsive steering. 
you can uh, yeah it doesn't catch you out in that sense a lot so interior view while we're driving extremely good views because obviously it's got no nose you can see straight out the front still can't see the tires just uh, yeah I like I like the fact that it's got windows all around everywhere when you look out obviously again the views are very good I can see my own tires to see what's happening if they're wheels spinning or whatever uh, yeah because there is no nose obviously I've got my whole windscreen. I am looking at like the bottom left at the minute because I'm going around that way. But I can also look at the bottom right and stuff if I want, which is, which is yeah, just nice really. It's a uh, definitely very good views. If you fancy doing like, you know, where you just want to stay on interior view and you don't want to let yourself use third person view, this would be a very good truck to do it because views all around are very nice. I wanted to see what it looked like in interior when because the suspension is pretty bouncy. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad though. As you can see, it's not tipping or anything. It's like I say, it's not like the Royal. The Royal almost encourages you to tip. This thing, it's tippable, but it's uh, it's not bad. That test, yeah, it caught its nose. I looked around. I mean, look, the clearance is very good, but because it's very springy, that's the perfect test. As soon as you hit that river, it kind of makes you go full suspension travel, and then there's a little lip just after to catch your bumper. So. Yeah, it caught me out on that one. Little tiny glitch here, I apologise, but it was uh, all I did was just drive out in auto and low, and they were both about identical speeds. It never struggled, it just it went at the speed you've seen when the footage came back. Interestingly, down here, it's the first truck, I think, I believe, that's done that to me, where I caught my nose on that little puddle, but it is like at the bottom of a dip again, so... But just bear it in mind, it is doable in this truck. So, rock bridge sort of thing. The reason I slowed down here is because on the barriers it struggled climbing over. I wanted to see if it would claw its way up the lip of that rock. And it did, to be fair. like that's, It did fine. It also does it again here. So, yeah, I had no issues getting up this rock. Like, the chain tyres. I find the chain tyres are pretty bloody good, to be honest. Even in mud they are pretty decent. I'm not saying they're the best. I'm not saying they beat mud tyres, but... I leave them on a lot of my trucks because they're just not bad enough that I need to go and change them. Yeah, night as well, because it's got nice quick steering, if you were towing a trailer over there, this would help because you can make the turns. Like if you had to turn and reverse with a trailer, it can get awkward. That's how I fell off in with my Navistar in one of the tips videos. Through here, it's pretty deep snow, but it still handles it fine, and once I'm out that bit, whether I'm in low or auto, they look similar. You'd probably be better off in low for fuel consumption reasons. However, what I will say is along here, it alternates all the time between shallow and deep snow. And if I'm in low, that's my max speed, that's it. Whereas in auto, you get little bonuses of like shallow snow where you speed up quite a bit. So, again, for me personally, yeah, I just I'd try and stick in auto if I can. Look at this, most dramatic sign death ever. I hit this sign, look at it, it's like, Bleh. tell mama I love her. And it's like, no, I'm done, I'm out, I'm dead. Right over actor. Uh, as for the mud test, I didn't, I wouldn't exactly say I had high hopes for a couple of reasons. One, it's only got one rear axle, and uh, they are double tired, but now I've got, say, six tires instead of ten. It's also quite a small truck. So this mud is deeper to it than it would be to some other trucks. It wasn't too happy about going through. What I would obviously normally do is drive along this edge anyway, which is what I did try, but then I drove uh, further in just to see what was happening. And basically, as soon as I start veering off from the edge, it's as good as stopped, whether I'm in high uh, mi uh, auto or low. It's not really making any difference. There is some of these little tree branches hidden in the mud as well, so... I mean, I wouldn't recommend high for going through here, but if you want to flick mud everywhere and have some fun and give your truck the authentic caked in mud look, then look no further than the high gear. That's definitely got the right look to it. But anyway, long story short, I winched to the edge and I drove along the edge. And it was fine, to be honest. Like, the deep mud, no. But as long as you skirt around the edge of that mud pit, it did actually do fine. So even with the turning circle here, absolutely like got round there, no problem. Almost too much, I had to unsteer for a minute. 
uh, going up the mountain. By the way, with the steering, the reason I've looked a bit mad with the steering in the last few days is because they've changed the steering mechanic and varying from truck to truck is like I've now got to relearn every steering, but this one is so nice and quick and responsive, it definitely makes things easy on you. So this is a little reason, it was just an example, but why I like auto over high or low is if you quickly need reverse, it's there and the amount of times I get caught out because I'm in high or low and I go to hit reverse and obviously it's in a different light it's not working when you've, uh, you're in high or low see it rolled there but because it's not top heavy it got back to its wheels however I did roll again and I didn't get back to my wheels so I brought the Tager to uh, save me started climbing back up here the Royal rolled about now if you remember so it definitely it's not as bad as the Royal but and because I'm going nice and slow at the minute, I'm not bouncing around on the suspension. Like I say, it's uh, its weight is like an L-shape, like it is. So it's front heavy, but there is still a nice amount of weight in the bottom as well. And pretty impressive here, I think, like considering how sharp that dip is. And that's the stock bumper. Yeah, it's got a very nice angle, really, from the front wheels to the uh, bottom of the bumper. And you can hear now, I'm just feathering the throttle, like... Again, that's what I would do normally. You don't have to go pasting through here at flat out, so just to make sure it doesn't jiggle on the suspension too much, that's what I was doing. <laughs> I was trying to make it about 10 foot ahead to the rolling test, but that did it. Rescued it with a Tager. I was just going to go around to the White Western Star Hill, and then I fell again. This is, I've cut a lot of these out, but yeah, it, it did tip quite a bit here and there in the uh, mountains again <laughs> forgot that it's about here I mean look at it what a bro truck Tager saved it nice and gently no problems however even though the Tager was willing to be pretty nice it rolled again and yeah Tager might be nice but the Tager's driver <laughs> was getting pretty damn impatient by this point so I was like right I'll drag you there myself. And wouldn't you know it, it finally submitted and just so happened to now be fine on its wheels. So anyway, White Western Star Hill. The best way I can explain it with its weight, you'll see here, it starts to veer to the left a bit and then it flicks. Imagine walking up a set of stairs while you're leaning your head right back. Like, it doesn't tip over easy, but on such a steep hill, because the weight's hanging over the back of me now because of the cab, that little wiggle on the hill basically was enough to flick it. And anyway, for all you low range fans, don't worry, I've got you covered. Walking up here in low range uh, with the diffs on, no problem, extremely good, very nice view. That might well be the thumbnail, I'll see. <laughs> I've used that kind of angle a lot. But yeah, I mean, look at it. Like, very nice. And because I'm going nice and slow again and I'm not trying to go on too much of an awkward angle sideways while I'm going up, it's, uh, yeah. Beaching wise, because it's a very short truck with quite tall suspension, all things considered. Look at this. You see there, I, I was thinking right now, ah, oh, damn, if I had a bit more power, I probably could have got out of that. And then I realised, I was like, oh my god, I'm in low. If I was in auto, I bet money I could have powered out of that because the steering was so quick. I dug in and had a chance, but the, uh, yeah, low just didn't have the speed to get me out of that. But yeah, beaching, it's very good for not beaching, basically. And this is how, like, you remember yesterday with the Voron, I was swerving all over the place. This is just so quick and responsive that on road driving, even at pretty high speeds, it's just very nice because it's so quick to steer that it, you, it's rare you'll ever get caught out with it, basically. Obviously, you can always just dab the brakes and stuff when you need to, but... You're not waiting for the steering to change from left to right. What they've updated with the steering mechanic is you used to, if you were turned full lock to the left and then you let go of the stick, when you're driving along it, it'd slowly float back to the centre, whereas now it goes back really quick. So I keep putting more input than I need to try and bring the wheels back. Round this corner, the Voron obviously went straight ahead, really. And then I thought, while I'm here, as I did it with the Voron, just to kind of highlight it, it I was pretty... Uh, impressed with it there as well high gear through the mud it stayed in high and then motored back up the hill pulling a trailer but if you remember here if you've seen the Voron review 
the Voron couldn't make the road. This thing is so ridiculously good at turning. It doesn't just make the road. I can turn so much I can hit that inside tree with the trailer and then I can turn the opposite way and straighten it out without having to put too much force against the tree which is good because sometimes obviously that can catch you out. And then here, originally I was going to try and go to the left but I did leave it too late. So I went through this gap. I mean, no problem there. I am nudging it against the tree but this truck's a little punchy. It's got a lot of muscle to it for a little truck. So I'm able to turn and I pull the trailer around and again I can turn sharp to the right like yeah for a twisty tight tight tracks so this might well be your truck. Uh, going down here again because the turning circle's so good I was able to go straight down the hill so there was no risk really of tipping. It caught its chin though most do to be honest the uh, Voron AE was one of the only ones that hasn't caught its chin that definitely impressed me. The Voron AE has probably got one of the best set up for not catching your chin on stuff. Through here, I mean, add it's, you know, it's not rapid, it's not the quickest truck, but it's uh, not bad, it certainly got over here, it got over rocks and stuff. So, standard issue, two concrete slabs. It certainly knows when it's got them on, but it doesn't turn into a completely different truck. It's still, as you'll see in a second, steep hills aside, steep muddy hills aside, it can handle cargo and go along very nicely. Trying to get up here, right now the trailer's at like full tilt upwards if that makes sense, so it's trying to ram my back end actually into the ground now, which is why the back wheels are kind of locked up. But that's not really a lack of power issue, that's just because it's so steep. I've got a hell of a lot of force trying to shove me into the floor right now. But I knew this would be the issue before I even came here and tested it. I knew this would be the problem. I can't drive straight up, so I've got to try and go at an angle. And it's just there's not enough weight in the base of the vehicle to overcome the weight of a heavily loaded trailer. But I, uh, I recovered. And I brought another trailer. I just... I know it's random, but I noticed it, so I thought I'd leave it in. Concrete slab, it couldn't get over that rock. It's a pretty damn meaty rock, but yeah, with no cargo, it did pull itself over. Which a lot of trucks wouldn't on a rock as uh, as meaty as that one. I was basically curious. I wanted to see, like, okay, it ain't going to do it with two slabs. I just wanted to know if it could with one. And sadly, exactly the same problem. It just can't overcome the weight of a tipping trailer, which a lot of heavier trucks can. So multiple loaf rescues later I finally got a trailer back on it went to go up here I was like, oh my god get yourself a loaf horse of a vehicle saved me for about the eighth time <laughs> ninth horse of a vehicle but eventually what I was trying to do was uh, tipping aside and again I know I've not got it wouldn't get up here with two cargo that's just that's all there is to it it ain't it's not got enough weight in it and wheels to grip the floor it's got the power but yeah, um, without a trailer though, bit of wiggling around, said hello to the uh, Tager. That also turned up, oh well, the loaf had to rescue the everything, as usual. I'm going to make a separate video, there's not a lot of messing around in this, because I'm going to make a separate video while this is uploading for a few of the shenanigans that happened today. So uh, yeah, stay tuned if you want to see that. Up here though, very nice, and once I get here, it didn't even lift the nose off because it's a very short truck. The turning's so good, I can easily miss that telegraph pole, which can be an issue for some trucks. Now here, I, I appreciate I've not got cargo in it, but I just fancied this wasn't necessarily going to make it in. But look at it, I'm in high gear. I was like, what? Drove up there like it was nothing. And again, I know I've not got seriously heavy cargo, but I still, that is impressive to me. It's a, yeah, it's a punchy little truck. It's got some good little muscle to it, to be honest. And yeah, it's not Tager or Voron levels of amazing, but that's why I was strict on the Voron yesterday, because it's a contender for best truck. This thing is a lot cheaper. This is a contender for a fun truck. And for that, I'm, I've had a lot of fun with it, to be honest. I didn't... I was obviously... I know I'm going to recover, so I just bombed it down that hill, and it did very well. As for the runway, it likes to drift to the left. And uh, yeah, that's how that one ended. So attempt number two, I caught it earlier this time. 
and it was uh, pretty good trying to get back over even though it's a very fast truck it didn't feel like it got as much distance off here as like the Voron or the uh, Royal but it still flew very nicely and one good thing because the snorkels are at the back of the cab they're still out the water that, by the way the reason it's not tipping down that's not the truck's nose heaviness that's just sometimes the mechanics of the game it just doesn't tip like yeah that that isn't the truck's fault reversing out of water fine like I say it's got a good little uh, punchy engine this thing so going back in the water for the snorkel test now as you can see from the snorkels you would assume I mean it's going to be half decent because why would it have snorkels like that uh, I got in the cab but I think that might be 5-1 to the game um, yeah as I'm going in by the way if one snorkels it underwater and one's out it doesn't matter it'll take damage so you've got to have both snorkels out but apart from that I mean look at it whole truck is underwater there's just its little peepers its little periscopes popping out and that's it and the engines running like I'm fine obviously because it's a small truck the P12 might be able to go further in because it's just such a big tall truck but for what this is yeah bloody brilliant snorkels like it's a submarine a full on probably the most submarine truck I've had and again though there it's getting 45 damage the Voron if you remember yesterday because the front floated it never took that much but the engine took a long time to die still so it's pretty decent I also uh, just to show you this was when I was coming back for a, another water test but this is what happens all the time and I'll make a separate video of what was going on but yeah that is why the loaf is a godsend to me because <laughs> that'll be that rescued it again I managed to drive to this island it's the one there's like with the airport where I ramp off because the snorkels are so tall I had to go right I didn't just drive straight but I made it to the island which is pretty damn respectable there's not a lot of stuff makes it here at all and I took less engine damage than the ANK did getting there so in conclusion uh, I think it's a bloody good truck I enjoyed it a lot it's fast it's uh, it is a bit bouncy and crazy but part of the game I enjoy is rescuing trucks anyway so I don't mind pushing my luck a bit I mean yeah it's not Voron or Tega good but it's not Voron or Tega prices it's I mean what's it 30 odd grand it's almost a third of the cost of a Voron or the Tega or whatever fully upgraded it's 70 grand so I can have this fully upgraded for less than the cost of one of the Vorons or the Tegas etc so yeah like I say it's not a contender for the best truck in the game but I don't want every truck to be the best in the game I want different trucks to have different strengths and weaknesses and all sorts and this has some strengths and weaknesses they're uh, like the front end is a bit heavy but yeah overall it's just a fun truck That's, I've enjoyed myself driving it it's a uh, fun for drifting and yeah it's just a funny little truck the steering's really nice on it but if you want to start hauling heavy cargo and that then a Tager or a Voron would eat this thing for breakfast but if you wanted to tow say metal uh, sorry wooden planks that are a bit lighter I think this thing would tick along all day long and it's yeah it's just an enjoyable vehicle that's the vibe I got from it really so yeah that would be my advice basically I would buy it for 30 odd grand it's a bargain and it's a lot of fun once you've upgraded it yeah 70 grand but yeah it's just it's a good one to add to your collection I've uh, like I say I've kept it it's not something I feel I'm going to sell. Uh, the Voron I have sold and I'm going to buy other Vorons with it. So that's about it for today though. I'm going to make a video quickly with the extras of this one. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Just a quick look. That's a little tyres.